Next up, we have a storyteller who <laughs> was the first AC on my senior thesis film. Uh, we went to college together, and I had no idea that we were, uh, what is this, like abortion sisters? Is that, is that what you'd call it? I don't, I don't think the, I don't think there's a term for the relationship. No. No, we value ourselves too much here. Um, but uh, thank you for sharing your story. Come on up and, and let everyone hear it. Guys, this is Paige Campbell. <laughs> Forgot to say your name. <laughs> so at first I was really, like, I was very anxious when I was coming here. And, um, you know, then I saw that I knew a bunch of people and I was actually really relieved and thinking, you know, like, oh, well, this is good. I'm much less anxious now that I know everybody. And then I remember that I'm going to tell you a really mortifyingly embarrassing story, and you're all going to know about it. So we'll see. Um, so I had a medical abortion, which in case anybody doesn't know, means it's just done with pills as opposed to surgery. And I think that a lot of people don't really know about medical abortion because we don't really see it represented in media. And that actually makes sense because it's not particularly dramatic as far as like a procedure goes. Like, so I went to my doctor, right? And they gave me the first pill to take in the office, and I took it with the nurse practitioner, like, staring at me really intently, which I assume was to make sure I didn't fuck it up. <laughs> which, well, no, no, but here's the thing, though. You would think it would be really difficult to fuck it up, and I thought so, too, until they gave me the second set of pills, and I was like, oh, do I swallow all six of these at once? <laughs> Don't get out of me. And the nurse was like, <laughs> no, no, no. So in case anybody didn't pick up on that, you shove those into your vagina at home. You don't swallow them. Don't swallow them. Not a good idea. No, it's, I didn't completely fuck it up. I, I did put them in my vagina. So, you know, I thought that I was going to have to, like, I thought I was going to collapse, and my boyfriend would have to carry me home, and, you know, but it actually wasn't that bad. Like, I really didn't have to go and lie down. I kind of could do whatever I wanted. And that seems to be the general trend, is that after you take the first pill, you know, you can go back to work, or you can go to class, or, I don't know, fucking museum or some shit. We had taco movie date night. Uh, to celebrate the fact that we weren't going to have a baby. Um, and, you know, I know, I was, I was thrilled. You know, and so really, in that 12-hour period, you can just go back to your regular life, walking among the general population, unaware. Um, you know, and I actually think it's kind of magical that really, no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, somewhere nearby, there could be a woman who's in the middle of an abortion. <laughs> and you would never know. I think it's great. Um, you know, but uh, the next day I wake up, you know, and I shove the pills in there and I just wait it. And so, wait, I know, has anybody here had a medical abortion before? So, did yours really, really hurt? Yeah. Okay, see, that's the thing. I don't know, I, you always hear all this bullshit about how, oh, medical abortions don't really hurt, you know, and they tell you that it's supposed to be like intense period cramps. Fuck that. That is not true. Mine hurt like hell. And I have been shot before. Literally, shot with a gun, and that was less painful than my medical abortion. I was in the ambulance, and you know how they do the thing where they ask you to rate your pain from one to 10? And I said eight, and the EMT was like, what is your 10? And the answer is this. <laughs> but you know, I think that, you know, I really think that everybody is so hesitant to say that it's painful. I mean, unless mine's a medical anomaly, but I really think people don't want to tell other women that it's painful because they're afraid it's gonna like, frighten them away, which is really stupid because women do incredibly painful things regularly just for fucking kicks. Like, I rip hair off my face <laughs> with hot wax voluntarily because I think it will make me look cuter. Like, I'm gonna not have an abortion because it's painful? That's fucking stupid. But, you know, the good news though is that even though it was actually very, very painful, it only lasted about 35 minutes. So it wasn't really that big of a deal. Um, you know, and then I just got to lie in bed for the rest of the day, eating pickles out of the jar and watching my boyfriend stare at me like I was gonna start talking in tongues. <laughs> um, you know, and really like it was, it did, it was very uncomfortable and it was not exactly what you could call dignified, but it was fine. Honestly, the whole thing was fine. The abortion was fine, the day after was fine, and everything after that was fine. Until, of course, the story that I lovingly refer to as Abortion 2, Revenge of the Uterus. <laughs> so, my job, for anybody who doesn't know me, requires that I go to my clients' houses. And many of my clients are filthy fucking rich. Like, 
filthy rich. And this particular client that I, one of the ones I was seeing at the time, lived in the Trump Tower, which even if you've never seen the Trump Tower or been to the Trump Tower, the name should kind of give away how fancy it is. And this apartment, oh my fucking God, this apartment was exactly what you would expect the Trump Tower apartment to be like. It was gorgeous. Marble floor, grand piano, floor to ceiling windows, like recognizable art on the walls. It, it was amazing. It's an amazing apartment. Now, <laughs> I had been warned, to be fair, that I might bleed again, but the doctor was incredibly vague about it and assured me that I didn't need a DNC, so I was just kind of, you know, going about my life, assuming that everything was normal. Uh, and this was maybe the second or third time I'd been at this, this family's house. And um, I stand up from the beautiful, white, suede, <laughs> don't get ahead of me. <laughs> beautiful, white, suede chair I had been sitting in. And I glanced down and I saw the spot. That stupid, triangular, spot of blood that every period having person in this room has seen before that makes your heart drop into your stomach. Yeah, it was just staring at me from that pristine white suede. And so I throw my jacket over the chair and I run to the bathroom. Now, of course, in keeping with the rest of the decor in this apartment, the bathroom was fucking unreasonably beautiful. Unreasonably beautiful. Pristine white marble floor, granite countertop, and the sink did not have handles. No, it had tiny trumpet playing cherubim. <laughs> Literally. And it was covered in gold. It was literally a golden sink. And behind this golden sink was the exquisite antique mirror reflecting back at me the fact that I looked like I had been stabbed in the fucking uterus. There was blood everywhere. There was blood on the back of my jeans. There was blood on the front of my jeans. There was blood on the floor. Oh yeah, much to my dismay, I realized that I had actually tracked bloody footprints into this bathroom all across the pristine fucking white marble floor. And so I did the only thing I could think of, which is I just started grabbing toilet paper and stuffing it into my underwear, which did nothing, of course, nothing at all. And I was so mortified. I was far too mortified to actually like dispose of my useless tampon in the waste paper basket, also golden, by the way. So I just wrapped it in toilet paper and shoved it in my pocket. You know, <laughs> and so, I mean, the blood, it was more blood, you wouldn't even notice. And so, and so I had to, you know, now clean all of the blood off of everything. But in keeping with the rest of the bathroom, the only thing available were white linen hand towels. <laughs> And so I had to use my scarf. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, you know, I clean, I clean all the blood off the front of the toilet and the seat of the toilet and the floor and the door handle, also golden. And I clean it off the cherubim's tiny little faces. And then I just ghosted. I left my jacket. I didn't say goodbye. And I snuck out the service elevator because I was so certain that I was never gonna see these people ever again. <laughs> and that my boss was gonna fire me and that I was gonna be, live in infamy among New York City's wealthy elite as the girl who bled out in the Trump Tower. <laughs> but the best part of this story is that they never said a word. Yep, I went back the next week. They had cleaned the chair or more likely purchased a new one. <laughs> and they pretended that everything was normal. And ladies and gentlemen, that is class. Thank you. Um, using Paige's pain scale, on a scale of one to 10, how uncomfortable were you? <laughs> one, two, three, okay, we've got some threes, four, five, five, Six, six, seven, do I see a seven, eight, nine, ten, really? Wow, all right.